Hey everybody, it's Righteous Freed, back with another character guide. This time, as you can see, featuring SP Cherie. Everybody's pretty excited. Came out last Thursday. And boy is she... I am going to love playing with her. She has amazing potential. For anybody who does not have her, she is a DPS unit. Originally, we'll look at her other classes. You could build her either as an assassin or a flyer dragon master. She w did not see much play after Season 1 because she was outclassed by many other units that were released shortly after. In her original, oof, her original talent, she did not get an attack boost. Only damage reduction if there was nobody else around her. And she only got to act again if she killed somebody. So, not the best. There were others who could do what she did and better and... They act again after killing somebody. Didn't matter that much because she is slightly frail. That was kind of rectified with her unique equipment and her 3C Raging Storm. But it was a little too late when it came out. But this new SP class should make her see a lot of play. And there's a couple different ways people have played her. But first, we're going to go over the basic of the class. She is holy as we can see. So no, no weaknesses at all. She does have slightly less attack than her Dragon Master class, but that loss is negligible. It's only 12 attack, I believe. Yep, only 12 attack. In Dragon Master, it is 607. Otherwise, all of her stats are roughly the same, except for the skill, but that won't matter too much. She has... 500 more HP than her Dragon Master class, so that really can help her with survivability. Her factions are Legion of Glory, being able to be buffed by Ledin, Elwyn, and Grenier. There'll be a separate video on him. He's actually a decent archer tank, but that's a separate video. Princess, with Luna and Shafaniel, and the soon-to-be-released Christiane. From the Languister Reincarnation series, but that's a far far away from now. And the Meteor Strike with Zerida buffing and then the soon to come Epsilon. So Zerida has been in play since season one. She will probably always be in play until they make a Zerida 2.0. So if you do want to run Sheree, Zerida is really great to pay with her. As is Elwyn, they both have very maneuverable play styles and slam into the enemy to kill them as fast as possible. We'll get into team comps just a little later. But you, Elwyn can fit into any box, so she can go along right with it too. Getting into her talent, Ambitious Princess. When unit moves, all passable terrain is treated as planes, like Juggler's Talent. So she can be stopped by Oldius. So you do want to make sure that if you're playing a lot of characters who are cavalry or have this type of movement, you ban out Oldius. When you're forced into battle, meaning somebody attacks you, your damage taken is reduced by 20%. That will always help with survivability. When you attack, your attack increases by 25%. After battle, if there's only one enemy or less within two blocks of Cherie, you act again. Cooldown is two turns. Now, this is actually one turn because you act again, and after you act again, you only have to wait one more turn before you can use it again. So, this is very great for her. She doesn't have to kill somebody to get it. This could allow her to Raging Storm stun, stun somebody, and then move up, and then usually one of her other skills, and kill that person now that she's in a better position. So this is really what would have made her a lot better earlier on, because not needing to kill somebody, act again, attack boost, and damage reduction is nice. If she just had damage dealt increase, oof. 
would have been a top contender for best DPS in season one. But this fixes the core problem of of her kit, giving her a lot of maneuverability and damage. On to her skills, we will start with her 3C, Raging Storm. Cooldown of 5, only one block, which was a problem for her assassin class that she couldn't use this because just didn't didn't work with it. But it deals 1.6 times damage to a single enemy. After battle, 100% of the damage dealt is restored to your HP. So most of the time, you're going to be at full HP after that battle. If you kill a target, your cooldown is reduced by 4 turns, so you only have to wait one more turn to use it. If not, the enemy is stunned for one turn, and it can't be dispelled, just like Sleep from Bozel. So this makes it even better. With Raging Storm, after you stun them, if they are... There's not a, another enemy within two blocks of Sheree, you can then just go and, for example, use lightning speed and kill them or just use a basic attack to finish them off because they can't counter attack you have no worries of damage super great ability for her core of her kit you're always going to use this next we'll go to lightning 1.5 times damage if you kill somebody reduces your cooldown by three so you can just use it again immediately it's a decent ability this is more towards pve though because if you're killing somebody like that in pvp you get this back up, and if you can just act again, you're already winning. You can, do, you can just use your other abilities. So you're most likely not going to use this, especially when we have lightning speed. Getting into that, it's a cooldown of 5 turns as well. Tax a single enemy dealing 1.6 damage. It grants you Gale and Wind Ride after battle. Wind Ride, when your HP is above 50%, damage taken from melee attacks decreases by 15%. Gives you a little extra survivability, which can be great when comboed with her talent and last rights. And Gale. Now it says here target can act again after taking action. It's supposed to say there is a 20% chance you can act again after taking action. And these buffs last for two turns. So do not let this con con fool you, confuse you. There's only a 20% chance to trigger this Gale. And... You can't trigger Gale if you've just used her talent and vice versa. There's like a lock that way you can't just constantly keep acting again. But this is going to be a very standard move. It's going to be great. Really solid if you just want to punch through everybody. Now we're going to get... We're going to go through all of her attack skills first and then go into her one cost. Wind Whisper, you're not going to be using, but it's an AoE. One ring deals 0.3 AOE damage and inflicts random a random debuff on an enemy. Every enemy that you hit. So she's not meant to AOE anymore. Probably never was. But she has this option. Not going to use it. She's meant to single target and just bust through everybody. In her assassin class, she had Shadow Raid. Ignores guard. Deals 1.3 damage. Pretty standard. A lot of people, we're going to jump here for a second, will run Goblin Knights. I'm not calling them Earth Elf Knight. They're Goblins. We'll run Goblin Knights with her. That way they can Shadow Raid, hit somebody, and then they can act again because they will always, because you'll most of the time have no enemies near you. You can just then finish somebody off at that point. I personally don't like them. They don't have an attack or damage increase, only a crit chance increase, and then they steal buffs if you get a crit. She's meant to be killing people. You just want to get in there, slam the enemy, act again, slam them again. Going back. Then, in her SP class, she gains Holy Thunder. Attack a single enemy, deal 1.4 damage. You displace them, knocking them back two blocks. Hilda can block this. Landius can block this. Other units that can't be moved or, if they are in the way, will block it. After battle, heal equal to 20% of the damage dealt, and disabled their passive skills lasts for one turn. The debuff can be dispelled, so it's not that great. But it does give her the ability to knock people around. This can help with positioning, and possibly if they're playing a tank other than Hilda or Landius, then, like if they play out battle, for example, knock her away, 
they then have to reposition. They That could give you another turn to set up and just keep slamming them. For me personally, I'm going to be using Raging Storm and Lightning Speed in my single target rush box. This will give me everything I need. Lead with Raging Storm, deal, deal a ton of damage, heal back up, stun them, attack again. Getting into our one cost passives, we have Legion. Very solid, very standard. When your HP is above 90%, attack and defense increase by 10%. Super great. Now, that used to be your go-to all the time. That was her best. You could swap it out with Reinforcement. You restore 20% HP after taking action. That's always good as well, but this is more for PvE. With all the abilities that she had, with the ability to heal with Raging Storm, this is going to give you everything you need. Sneak is pretty bad. When starting bat initiating battle, crit increased by 10%, damage taken decreased by 20%. You're really not going to need to use this too much with the damage you're dealing, the damage reduction you have from last rights. Shouldn't need this at all. Don't bother with it. Smoke, really bad. After attacking, 30% chance to lower all damage taken by 30%. Don't go for this. Any passive that only has like a 30% chance to activate is typically on the normal bad. Not all of them, but most of them. And then finally, her last skill... Gallop. Unit mobility plus two. What? I'm pretty sure this is the first passive when it's not a 3C that gives a mobility as a just a passive. This is absolutely incredible. As a princess, she has four base movement. This gives her six. So one more than Dragon Master. Absolutely incredible. And when formed of mixed forces, after taking action, you restore 30% HP. Because she has a holy class, all of her soldiers are not holy. Not a single soldier is holy, so you will always restore 30% HP. Gallop literally is now better than reinforcement. There is no reason to ever use it again. If you want to play her as a dragon master, I guess you could, but... That's just kind of worse to a degree because you don't have the better talent. You don't get the attack increase. So all in all, there is now no reason to run Reinforcement. Zero. End of story. So with that said, Gallop is going to be the one, the one C I am going to be using on her for 99% of the time. So, with this combo, giving her 6 movement as a base, absolutely amazing. Traveling over any train is planes and nothing inhibits her. Water, mountains, she laughs at them. Moving on to her class mastery. As a princess, in addition to anything holy can use, she can use swords, axes, heavy armor, and light armor. 4 movement, 1 range. For your Mastery Stones, in the arena you want HP, Attack, Skill, Crit Chance, and Crit Damage. Maximize the damage that you deal and the chance of critting. Most important thing about her. Get in, get out, look, look beautiful doing it. For Armor and Headgear, you're going to run Attack, HP, and Defense. Maximize Damage, give yourself a little bit of survivability. Never hurt anybody. For a weapon and accessory, attack, HP, and skill, give yourself a little bit extra crit chance with that damage. Really simple, standard stuff. Not going to spend any more time on it. For soldiers, there's a lot of different options you have here. The vast majority of the time, you will use Angel because they have 45% magic damage reduction, and they give a solid 20% increase to attack and defense. As long as your HP is about 50%. Super nice. Great. Universal. Nothing wrong with this unit for what it does. Now, as I was mentioning before, a lot of people will play Shadow Raid and use Goblin Knight. That is an option. If you see that there are some squishy targets that you can pick off, that might be a chance for you to use it. Goblin Knight will, 
will allow you to use your six range instead of five because if you use for example we're not getting into missed answer no one uses her if we use a bandit for example that way you can maximize crit and attack while be attacking from range he'll ha you'll have five movement with your passive because he only has three base that's still pretty decent just like dragon master shadow raid will have a better chance of killing with his increased attack can also use Elf Master, but these are garbage. You need to be in Woods and Mountain in order to get the attack and defense bonus. All in all, again, I don't like trying to go ranged on her. They are very much trying to make her melee. You will not use Dragon Trooper because you have to move five blocks in order to get maximum damage. You do get damage reduced when doing that, but I don't feel it's worth it. Because you have to move. This can make have, try to make you go into a bad position. If it was only three blocks, that would be okay. That's something more manageable. Now, you do, if you take damage, your mobility is goes up by two. And it lasts for one turn. But this is a non-unique buff. This is treated just like Breeze buff. So, you can't stack it. I don't like her. You're either going to stick with Angel or Griffin Knight. Griffin Knight have less magic defense, uh, Matt, less defense and less HP, but they have 30 more attack, and they, they gain 30% attack and defense when HP above 80%. If you really need that extra attack right there, these are your guys. They will help you get that extra little bust through power. Nothing wrong with that. They also got a really cool skin. I do like them. I would prefer Stealing Warrior as they're a little more balanced, but hey, gotta, gotta use what you get. Unicorns. These can be, you're not gonna use these too much because you have the flyers, but with the increased amount of burn heart and other infantry units we're seeing, these could give you some good type advantage. But you only get their attack increase if you're fighting on Forest Mountain or Grassland. So just make sure it's a map that has plenty of that if you are going to use them. Because you don't need them from their movement. For the Terrain Master movement of ignoring what type of terrain you're on. Because she already has that. You're not going to use Heavy Cavalry. These are bad. Don't level them up. Dragoons will help you deal physical damage. And all you need to do is attack to gain their boost. It's 30% at max rank. These are actually decent units. I don't have them built up because I have so many other units and I'm trying to build everything else. But that can be a great option if you need physical damage with the cavalry. All right. That said, for her soldiers, you're either going to stick with Angel 90% of the time or Griffin Knight, one of those two, depending on who you prefer, if you like the extra attack. Or you're going to go with Unicorn in order to have a type advantage. And also deal some magic damage. That can sometimes mean the difference between breaking soldiers and not. On to the equipment. For weapons, you are typically going to want Ragnarok. This is just an amazing weapon. Don't mind the enchant. I need to re-enchant it. Dealing fixed damage before battle gives you a chance to break the enemy's last rites, making it easier to kill them. High attack, super good, all around. If you don't have Ragnarok, you can use Scarlet Reaper. It's not as effective because it's meant for AoEs mostly, but it can give you extra, extra damage while attacking and then deal a tiny bit of fixed damage after battle. You can use swords, you can use Unstoppable Knight. When attacking somebody with full HP, gain 5% extra attack, defense, and magic defense. Always great there. You can use Mimir's War Axe, but it does have a significant drop in attack compared to a sword or an axe. So, do have to watch out for that. It does have a bunch more HP, especially compared to Ragnarok with... More than 200. 
but I would only use this if you don't have anything else. Instead, in place of Unstoppable Knight, you can also use a Seal Guardian. If you don't have Unstoppable Knight, this is a solid weapon. Not the best, but most certainly not the worst. Don't use Balance Blade. That's not for her. That's bad. No staffs. Elwin likes to keep his sword. <laughs> Peacemaker is an option. Because you can negate their passives before battle. So that can be the difference. If you're going up against the Landius. You can Raging Storm, proc Battle Threat. And then possibly wipe them out in one hit. Used to play this on my Elwin as a Lancer all the time. Before SP came out. I loved Sword Souling and getting this. It was the best, best thing ever. Mjolnir is also actually a vi more viable option than Mimir's War Axe because you dispel a buff before a battle. That could mean the difference between killing them or ruining their strategy. You're not going to use Oath. This is defensive. Throne Guardian if you literally have nothing else because it does give you 10% attack and 5% HP, but I would save that for, like, Hilda. Bloodsword, Hrunting... It can deal extra fixed damage afterwards. This sometimes can mean the difference between killing and not killing. It does give you skill for extra crit chance. Pretty decent, but she is not really the one to deal to rely on fixed damage to kill them. Dragon Slayer Gram is just a solid weapon, 8% attack and HP. Pretty unique there. You're not going to be facing off against dragons, so you won't get its extra effect. Frostrend is actually something that I think is underrated because it does... If you attack and hit a tank, if it, there's a 50% chance to proc reducing the mobility by 2, which means they can't guard for a turn. So they will either have to end their tank's turn or heal it to get out of it. So that can make them use the healer early and you can go in. Kind of an option depending on how you want to play. Demon Slayer, you don't you don't really care about the spelling buffs because you just want to kill everybody. You don't have to worry about buffs if they're all dead. Again, no staffs. And that'll be it with, again, Ragnarok being the best item choice. For her armor... Last Rites, anybody who can equip Last Rites, it's the best for her. This is an absolutely amazing equipment. When your HP is at 100%, lowers all damage taken by 40%. This will help you live super, super good. Get as many as you want. You can never have enough. If you don't have them, her unique is pretty decent. Defense and magic defense plus 5%. When initiating battle, if you take fatal damage, you won't die. Four, there's four turns before you can use it again. So you, you can. Uh, this was meant to be used with Raging Storm. Attack into somebody, you die, you kill them, but you revive, and then you heal the full, and then you run away. So this is an option. Other options do include Arcane Battle Garb. If you want to deal extra fixed damage afterwards, you can combo that with Hrunting in order to finish people off. Forbidden Defender's Armor. That way you have a chance of reducing damage if they attack you. There's a 30% chance. Same thing goes for Bloodline Armor. Bloodline Armor or Aeolus Armor. Mirror Armor is really not what you're looking for because you're not tanky. You don't want you don't want to be attacked. Like If you get attacked, you need a, the highest chance to live. Galaxy Cloak increases your magic defense and HP. You don't really need that. Especially if you're going to be having angels as they'll absorb most of the magic damage. Tenyo's Robe is something you would only use if you have nothing else to use. And Aeolus, I mean, uh, Assault Suit is just bad. Like I, only, I have it on my Luna from a long time ago. And my Matthew, just because I need something on him for doing all the normal events so I can get my points. 
God, it's stress is bad. Don't use it. Don't use Gaia's armor. So, in conclusion, last rites, number one. Cherie's unique is number two. And then something like Forbidden or Bloodline armor is number three. For your headpiece, you have a few options. A lot of people run Glory of the World, HP plus 10%. Before being forced into battle, heals 10% of HP if the unit is of mixed forces. And you'll always be mixed in a holy class. And it blocks one fatal strike from fixed damage. So you survive at 5 HP and then they go after battle damage. Oh, you live. And then you revive at 1 HP, literally. But hey, better than dying. You can also use Fury of Tear, which will help her deal even more damage. Nobody will ever say no to dealing 10% more skill damage. That can mean the difference between killing somebody like a tank or not. Let's see, getting out of the uniques. You can also use King's Crown. That way you can give one of your allies 20% in increased damage to help. That way you can help each other bust through tanks. Drumming in your eye if you attack. 50% chance after battle to decrease damage dealt by another unit within two blocks. So you can just attack the same unit again and not have to worry about dying sometimes. And then there's Tenyo's. Tenyo's is always a good option on anybody who can equip it because you have a potential chance of giving somebody a plus three mobility. Never overlook this. Now, I am using Glory of the World. I do want I really do like giving her a 10% 10, 10 HP and allowing her to heal if she's attacked and giving her fixed damage resistance. Or revival, I should say. I'm going to be trying this out. I might switch to either a King's Crown or I just got another Fury of the Tear this week. I don't think I'll be using Tenyos because I want to make sure she can either help with additional damage or deal additional damage. But... Fury of Tear, King's Crown, and Glory of the World are going to be top three. Whichever your preference is, I'm using Glory of the World at this moment. For her, you, I mean, for her accessory, Twilight Star is going to be what you would want to use. Attack and in plus five percent, seventy-five attack, seventy-five int. Before, before initiating battle, deals fixed damage equal to whichever the attacker and whichever is lowest of that unit. This will help you break last rights or any other thing that requires somebody to be at 100%. Again, difference between killing and letting them live. Now, if you don't have that, because I only have three, I just got my third today off of a random Arena 300 box. Really excited about that. Have to enchant that later. But like I was planning to use, Slayer's Emblem is great. 500 HP, 75 attack, plus 8% attack. And if you attack a flyer, 12% extra attack. Super strong, great all around. You can also use Judge Talisman. Attack and defense with plus 8% attack. And if you attack a holy unit, you get plus 12% attack. Super strong there. If you want to play something like Fury of Tear and have full immunity to fixed damage, Swordsmith Metal is always a good option. You do sacrifice some attack, but not having to worry about being silenced or taking fixed damage can be a good trade off. Overlord Badge really is not good as it used to be, but. With not having to worry about mobility reduction or your stats going down, that can always be a good thing there. It also does give you HP and attack along with 5% to all stats. So if you don't have anything else, Overlord Badge is a great option at that point. Let's see...
Heart of Guy or Insidious Pendant, I would I would not bother. I would find anything else. Like Insidious Pendant is just not good for her. You need attack increase. And it does not give any damage increase. Only crit chance or crit damage. Or I'm sorry, crit chance. Other than that, no defensive items. Wing Chin Guards can be good because it does give you extra defense if you're attacked. You don't get the HP, but you do get attack and defense as base stats, so super nice there. She unfortunately can't wear Apex Boots because that would make her too good. Seven, seven movement off the bat. Whew. But in conclusion, Twilight Star is probably going to be the best just because you can break class rights. But if you don't have it, Slayer's Emblem, Judge Talisman, awesome as well. Hey everybody, this is a quick cut-in for the, the SP Sherry guy. I did not go over her best in chance for her equipment. We're going to get into that right now. For the most part, you are going to want Breeze. Because attack and int plus 5%, damage dealt plus 10%. And a 30% chance to increase mobility by 2, lasting for 1 turn. This is absolutely great for her, comboing off of the 6 movements she have. If she procs it, she'll have 8 the next turn. Giving her astounding control over the map and an incredible threat range. Breeze, you can never go wrong with on any character. Always highly, highly ad advised to use it. It's going to be one of the best enchants you can use in the game. Another enchant you can use on her is Rough C. If you don't want to go with the damage increase, you can go with when attacking, your attack increases by 10% and you take 15% reduced damage. Giving her even more survivability, being able to trade with other people who might be able to counter kill her. That way she can live with just a little. Now, again, do prefer Breeze, giving her extra mobility will help. Her talent giving her 25% extra attack when attacking is absolutely amazing. But Rough C can be great too if you just want to stack the attack on. You don't really want to go Full Moon because you don't need the extra defensive stats. And Rough C, Rough C will always give you the attack when attacking. You don't need Int as well. Kind of a specific use. Clock is not good on her. You can go for a crit build, trying to maximize crit, but you do lose some raw stats, and you only deal damage if you crit. With a lot of Hildas running around and Landiuses, if you don't ban them first, this can definitely take a lot of power off. Meteor is okay. All damage dealt after entering battle plus 20%. If you want to give up the chance to have extra mobility... That can work as well, but you also do lose 5 attack from the Breeze enchant. Magic is bad, don't ever use this. And the blue and green enchants are not for her, those are defensive. So, just to summarize real quick, Breeze, going to be the best, going to be what you want. Getting more movement will always help her. Rough C is a great second though, being able to get stack on that attack and reduce damage. All right. All right. Now we're going to take a quick look at our bonds. Oh. For her bonds, for level 4, when you are a princess, if you're forced into battle, you take 10% less magic damage. For her level 7, if you're forced into battle through a physical attack, your the damage you deal is increased by 10%. Probably not going to see too much of that. She's a little frail. I don't think that'll make too much of a difference, but the magic damage taken definitely will help the angels. Super strong overall. A lot of stats, a lot of power. Sheree is not going to be game-breaking like Ellen was when he's first released, changing all, making all tanks decide if they have to run Blood Pact or not, having to worry about him and the majority having to switch over to Blood Pact just so that they can survive. 
But she is going to shake things up. She is going to be a one-man army, or one princess army, I should say. Huh? Huh? Princess? Ambitious princess? Laugh. But no, she is great in rush comps. Aka, Werner, in February when we get Tiaris' 3C, that's going to help her as well. If you have her and Elwyn on the same team, with Elwyn's faction buff giving plus 15% extra damage when she has 80% or more HP, that is going to be amazing. She will be able, If you have her and Elwyn on the team, you're just going to be able to 1-2 combo. Now, units that you do want to look out for against, Oldius will slow her down. Archers will, if you since you'll be using flyers most of the time, have a slight advantage over her. She has no form of debuff resistance. She does not have she only has one way to recover HP. So after you use that, she is slightly vulnerable. She can't be can't heal by herself other ways. Except until you get to gallop, you have to end your turn to get it. This does make up for Make up for that, though. Very great ability. I guess I shouldn't say she doesn't have a way to recover HP, because she just literally does. But, that's going to be it. She fits into many different comps. Once Christiane comes out, she'll have a lot more flexibility, because the tank will be able to buff everybody. But if you want to run a princess faction, she will love having Luna's buff. She will love having Shafaniel's buff. She just doesn't care. Put Tiaris with her, attack blessing. I don't think there's anybody who will live through Churi. Let's see. Alright, that's going to wrap it up. Do appreciate y'all watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, Righteous Freed out.